Let us now talk about the spinal nerves. Now spinal nerves, as the name tells us, they arise from spinal cord. All of them arise from spinal cord. There are 31 pairs of spinal nerves. 31 pairs. Now, these 31 pairs are divided into various zones. These zones totally depend on the vertebral column. We classify that as cervical spinal nerves, then thoracic spinal nerves, lumbar spinal nerves, sacral because of the vertebral regions and coccygeal or coccyx. There are eight spinal nerves which arise from the cervical region. So eight from here, 12 from thoracic region, five from lumbar, five from sacral and only one from the coccygeal. So that gives us the 31 pairs. Now when we write formally, it is known as spinal formula. Spinal formula actually is representation of the same arrangement and the numbers. We write it as C for cervical 8, T for thoracic and 12, L for lumbar and 5, S for sacral again there are 5 and C for coccygeal and 1. Like we write dental formulas and all similarly we have something called spinal formula. All spinal nerves they are mixed. Now why they are mixed that we will see. So spinal nerves are mixed. When we talked of cranial nerves we saw some of the cranial nerves are pure sensory some are pure motor and some were mixed. Here, all spinal nerves are mixed nerves. Now, each spinal nerve arises from the spinal cord through two roots. So, to understand this, let us make this diagram of spinal cord and see that how these spinal nerves actually originate. So, this is the dorsal side, this is the ventral side, here is the canal and let us make the grey matter inside. We have seen when we were talking about the structure of spinal cord that the grey matter is in the form of English alphabet H or butterfly shape. So this is the grey matter and the outer one is white matter. The arms or the extensions of gray matter which we see here because they are on the dorsal side they are called dorsal horns so this would be the dorsal horn and this would be the ventral horn so this is these are the names which are given to them on the basis of on the basis of the sides Okay, now let us see how these nerves originate. From the dorsal horn, one root arises and from the ventral, one root arises. So here, there is this nerve fiber that we are talking of. And this nerve fiber has a swelling, which is actually known as the dorsal root ganglion. This is dorsal root ganglion and this dorsal root ganglion is made up of pseudo unipolar neurons pseudo unipolar neurons and this fiber is sensory we'll put the arrows or the direction so this is the nerve which is arising from here after the ganglion, it comes here. Now let us talk about the other root. It arises from the ventral horn and it is here. So, 
the, let us give them the name. Because it is arising from the ventral horn, we call it ventral root. We can also call it efferent root. And it is motor in function. So we can also call it motor. Now what does it mean? Motor means a nerve which is going to take the message or stimulus from CNS to the organ. So the direction is going to be like this. This is the arrow in which the impulse is going to travel. Sensory or let us label this one first. It is on the dorsal side. So we call it dorsal root. We can also call it afferent. And because it is going to bring the messages or stimulus from the sense organ to the CNS, that is spinal cord, it is also sensory. So, and the direction is going to be towards the spinal cord. So, in sensory, the direction is towards the spinal cord. Motor, the direction is away from the spinal cord. Now, when these two fibers, they emerge. Now, let us visualize a simple thing here. Let us say that this is the spinal cord, which is between the two vertebrae. Say so this is one vertebra and this is the other vertebra. And between these two, there is a spinal cord. Now, the space which we see here between the vertebral column and the spinal cord is known as the neural arch. I'm just going to make a rough thing here. Say, this is the vertebra, one vertebra here, and here is the other vertebra. And the spinal cord is going through this vertebral column. This space is the neural arch. Now, the two roots which we have seen, they are in the neural arch. The sensory part is here and the motor part is here. When these two emerge from the intervertebral foramen, so what is coming out is a sensory branch and a motor branch, but they are surrounded by a membrane. So here, this is the membrane through which they are coming out. So when we see this entire nerve, this is the nerve that we are talking of. And when we see this nerve, it has a sensory branch also, which is going to take the message towards the spinal cord and there is a motor branch which is going to take it out. So we see one nerve which is performing both the functions that is sensory as well as motor and that is why we call it mixed. So spinal nerves are mixed nerves and as soon as this nerve comes out of the intervertebral foramen or space it divides into three branches. So now this nerve, it divides into three branches. The branch which is going towards the dorsal side is known as dorsal ramus. This is dorsal ramus. It supplies to the muscles of skin on the dorsal side. The branch which is coming on the ventral side would be called ventral ramus. It is going to supply to the muscles of the skin on the ventral side, also the limbs, upper and lower limbs. And one branch, the middle branch, it joins a ganglion. And this ganglion is of autonomous nervous system. So this is the ganglion of sympathetic nervous system that is autonomous nervous system and the branch is known as ramus communicates so this branch this branch is going to come here and i'll have to label it here this is ramus communicates that is the branch which is joining the autonomous nervous system so what is in the spinal cord? There are two roots, one dorsal, one ventral. Dorsal has a ganglion, which is called dorsal root ganglion. There is no such ganglion in the ventral root. Dorsal is sensory. 
That means it is made up of fibers which are going to bring the messages from various organs to CNS. Motor also has neurons which are going to take the message away from CNS to a particular organ. So each spinal nerve at its origin has two roots. But when it emerges from that intervertebral space, what we see is both the fibers covered by a common membrane. So what we see is a nerve and this nerve has one sensory fiber and one motor fiber and that is why we call all sensory, uh, sorry, all spinal nerves as mixed nerve because they have one sensory fiber and one motor fiber. As soon as the spinal nerve emerges or comes out, it divides into three branches. One goes on the dorsal side, it is called dorsal ramus. One goes on the ventral side, it is called ventral or sometimes lateral ramus also. And there is one branch which joins a ganglion of autonomous nervous system. And this branch is known as ramus communicans, which is joining with the autonomous nervous system. And that is why when we write that all spinal nerves are mixed, this is the reason. But at origin, they have two roots, one dorsal and one ventral or one sensory and one motor. And these fibers, they remain in the nerve fiber, that is the spinal nerve. And that is why they work as mixed nerves. So this is how all uh, 31 pairs arise. But if you are able to recall the structure, the spinal cord goes only up to the first lumbar. After that, it changes into a non-nervous part. But the nerves, uh, they're going to arise from that part. Like the diagram which we made was like this. It terminates here and then there was a non-nervous part. So the spinal nerves which arise from here, they leave the vertebral column like this in their corresponding area only. So fiber would arise from the spinal cord but emerge from that specific vertebra or vertebral pair. So this is how the 31 pairs of spinal nerves are.